Hi everyone, we're going to show you a quick tool that I've been working on it for a year. It's a hair system, we call them Fabio. So let's go ahead and start with the review. And the idea of this is it's an easy hair system that you don't have to go node inside the node, inside the node, everything is just straightforward, everything comes from these nodes and that's it. And the only thing the user needs to populate is just basically the skin, the hair guides, plums, or if they're going to use a fire guide. Uh, and the example that we have is basically it's just a sphere. We have a null, we call it skin, and then later on I'm going to show you if we scan and we want to use more of the guides. And we're just copying a couple of lines. We're getting the guides, Doo -doo -doo. and we're deleting just half of them. Doesn't matter, you can delete as many as you want, and then we get clumps. And for that, the thing we're going to do, we're going to populate those from here. Let's just like to drag and drop. So, get the skin, the guides, and then just the clumps. And everything works. Now we can see the red lines represent that we have here. And here we have. Okay, uh, the first feature is a full interpolation. These ones basically, if you have the same amount of guides curve as vertex in the geometry, you can use this and it's going to populate everything. If you have uneven numbers, then you can come here and use it like that. And you will see that it's not grabbing the whole thing. The reason because of that, we have to increase the guide radius in here till we find something that we like. And you can see how it's like getting there. And well, we have to like keep drawing. And that's it. Here we can resample the the curves. If we can check, we currently are using the same amount that we have from the guy, which are five. So basically, that's what we're getting here. But if we want, we can just go ahead and resample that and get more. This is basically going to give the resolution of the noise on the shader that we'll see in a moment. Another important feature is the clumps, uh, the ones that we provide here. In this case, basically, you can put any amount of clumps that you want or any position where you want them. You can even come here and modify the guys. So we have the radius and here install we have to come here, go to the clump section and turn them on. Now we can control the amount how big they get and they are gonna go and check the shapes and so on. And other feature that we have is remove uh, the uncomplete one and if we want to use the closest one this is going to work when we have a very large value here. We can see the different, like, one clump of the hair, like the root can go over past and mingle with the rest. But if not, everything is going to end as soon as they get closer to the next clump. And basically these are the settings to like, bring all the skin, the curve, and everything that we have. Now we're going to go and pass to the style. In the style we divided everything into different sections, I'm going to explain them. Uh, the first one is the noise. This noise goes along the root of the hair and goes through the tip. So we can do something like that. And in that case, only the tip is going to get the noise. We can increase this. The noise, type of different noise that you want to do. Some of them we have to be careful because the vector is going to be one by one by one. And here we have the scale. The scale is just randomize each of the hairs. Some of them are going to go to minus one, or one's going to go to one, and the push is also is the same thing. Maybe we just want to randomize through the tip on that. What is the push? The, the push basically what it does is going to randomize the difference of the vertex and they're going to move them forward. So this is going to create that some of the hairs are going to be shorter, other ones get longer. And at the end, basically, we have the width. This is the only one that's going to be seen reflected on the render. In this case, the root is thicker and goes to all the tip and then get thinner. And to explain the clump, let me go ahead in here and remove the unclumped ones to install. 
is the same thing. We have the shape. In this case, we can shape how we want the clump to work. In case we have something like super sharp or something curvy, or we can even do like crazy shapes like that. Mm. The noise, same thing, it goes through the root and then expands to the tip. Same thing, we have the noise. The scale, this guy works same as the hair. It randomizes each one of them, and we can modify these and if we want some minus two and three and so on. And we can control the push, type of noise that we want, and the frequency that we want. And don't forget, this is also this is being controlled by the resolution of the curve. In this case, we only have five points, remember, from the guide. But if we resample and now we get 20 or even 50 per guide, these are the ones they control the resolution of the hair. Twist. Let me see if this works. Yeah. Is this work? Well, I'm still working on that. It's supposed to like twist around. Oh, yeah. Use twist. Hey, yeah, it does work. Okay, so let me go in here and remove the noise. So we can show and see what it's doing. So we have the shape and with the twist, the hair twist around the clump curve. So now it looks like a drill. So yeah, that's what the twist does. And again, the width. Uh, the way uh, I set up as default is use the same as regular hair. And let me turn back again everything. So now that we have everything here on size, we divide it and I added an additional section for white hairs, which basically that's what they're supposed to do, just white hairs. All people get white hair. Some of the animals uh, in the forest, they have white hair. Same thing with the crazy which is just a percentage that we can get from here, the ratio. This one is just in case you want to do an additional layer of control, you can come here and make it like uh, and have just an extra layer of fur on top and the guard, the guard are exactly the same thing as crazy and white. The only difference is the width is twice as thick as the regular right here and that's it. What's it called, guard? Because in the fur of the animals, they usually have guard hairs. What they do is they cover the rest of the fur, and some of the animals are going to keep the temperature, and some of them are going to get the, the water out of the hair, and that way they can keep the, a nice temperature. That's what they are. Okay, and after getting all the control, we go to the render tab. And the render tab, if you're familiar to any other object, these are uh, the mask, regular stuff. In this case, you might want to see the regular skin or the guys or so on. And uh, mask or ray trace sampling, as default, is getting the motion blur, all the dicing and so on. The geometry, and this is the magical part where you're actually going to get it as delay low when you render. This is going to obey the amount on the render density that we have. And we already have a quick setup here. So if we try to render these guys, this pretty. In this case, we're going to be rendering a density of 5,000. And here we calculate the amount, and we're going to be rendering 100,000 something pairs. And here we have it. And basically, this is a delay load that is reading all that information. Okay, I turn off the features on the shader so I can explain one by one what they do. If we come here, the specularity, the transmission, basically is how much of the light goes through each of the hairs and going all the way along. And here you can do it through the ramp, again through, through the tip, and if you want to multiply it for with an environment uh, map, and also if you want to change the color in here. The secondary reflection basically is going to be the specularity. You can see the edge of the of the light coming here. Again, it goes through the root, through the tip, through the reflection quality. is only going to be working when you have reflection of the objects on. The reflection size basically is going to increment that range. 
and the reflection shift basically move that up and down along the, the curve. Just watch out because it's, this is a very sensitive uh, parameter. And the glint is basically just like an additional specularity on top of that. Now you can see how it's like brighter. So if you want to see, uh, think about it like the glint's a top multiplier for that one. And the primary, this is basically the color of the object itself, even though that uh, all the other hairs and everything they call it as primary specularity, it's just the color. And here you can change the size, but and here is the main one of the specularity. And here in the diffuse, you can control the intensity. You have the main color. Oops, didn't grab it. So you have the base color, which is a multiplier of the gradient who's a multiplier of these runs, so in this case we're going to come here and grab this guy and make it green. A third or a 33% of the hair is going to get that range of the color. Uh, again, the root if you have a texture, tip if you have a texture, if you have the leper and this one, I don't think it's going to work very well because we haven't set the texture on the skin of the object. And white hairs, white hairs that we have, as you can see, we're gonna get an additional color, crazy ones. The white hairs are set up as that, so whatever color you set here, it's going to be the crazy hairs. They're gonna be a multiplier of the color of the hair, as same as the guard hairs. Okay, we have that, and yeah, multi clone. I just want to make straight, I just want to grab one. Okay, so if we go to the material and we turn on the edges, now you can see how it's multiplied through one of through the other side and we have like a fake tube around. So in this way we can get the nice tubular shape, but we don't have to create additional geometry for that. We also have the opacity. One of the nice tricks to make it softer, you just come here to the edge and grab the guy and make it very dark. And we'll just push this guy here to the end, and that that guy's gonna soften the edge. This case look for a more fuzzy style. And also, if you just want to mask a particular red, green, or blue here, and if you want to use a texture for that, and fake caustic if you want to turn them on. Here is where you can set up the range for the shadows to use. And at last, here in optional, if you're using a match rate distance, it will work. Any other ones, it just bypass that guy. Conserve energy, just make sure that it's just 0 to 1, the colors. Uh, enable thick round is part of the shader too. And the nice thing is we added these AOVs that you can see on the on the output and one way to just use them is come here, grab the let's go ahead and do uh we don't have anything plotted but let's go ahead and grab the hair lane. So we'll count and grab that guy and we'll go to the render output and we make an additional output Boop. and we call that guy and this is gonna be a mask, mask just float. <coughs> now we can see the color goes from 0 to 1, just in case if we can uh, override those parameters later on in a compositing program. <coughs>